Hi, my name is Dominic Duval. I'm the Director of Enterprise Training at the Linux Foundation. Before we start this tutorial, I would like to point out that the material that Dr. Chris Brown will be presenting is covered in great details in our Linux Network Management course. If you're interested in details in this course or any other training that we present at the Linux Foundation, I invite you to visit training.linuxfoundation.org. Chris, take it away. Hello, I'm Dr. Chris Brown. I'm a freelance consultant and writer and trainer working mostly with Linux. And in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about the packet filtering facilities in Linux and how you can use them to build a simple firewall. Let's start with a bit of theory. Down inside the Linux kernel, there's a, a framework of code called NetFilter. And every IP packet that flows through the machine is sub subject to scrutiny uh, by NetFilter. It can look at things like the source and destination IP address of the packet, uh, the overlying protocol, whether it's TCP or UDP, uh, the source and destination port numbers, um, which network interface the packet came in on and which it's going out on and other things like the individual flags in the TCP headers for example. And based on that examination and on a set of rules uh, that we define NetFilter will decide to either accept the packet that is to allow it to pass or to drop it. Now this filtering occurs at a number of places within the packet flow inside the machine. Let's have a look at some of them. Here we have a packet coming in off the network and first of all a routing decision is taken. Is the packet destined for the local machine or not? If it is, it passes through the input chain, that is to say a list of filtering rules. Assuming it survives that, it passes on to a a local process, presumably a process that's listening on a TCP or UDP port. If the packet is destined for some other machine it will pass through the forward chain, another list of filtering rules, before being transmitted back out onto the network. And if the packet originates on the local machine it will pass through the output chain before being sent out to the network. Now a chain is basically just a list of rules and each rule consists of a pattern and an associated action. And the datagram passes down the chain um, in order and the first rule that matches the datagram determines the fate of the packet. It, it, the uh, the uh, associated action will be applied to the packet and the actions as I've said are normally to accept or to drop the packet. If the packet makes its way right down to the end of the chain uh, without being matched then there's also what we call a policy that applies to the chain and the policy is basically a default action that will be taken uh, for packets that don't actually match any of the patterns within the chain. Now all of these rules are down inside the kernel but in user space there's a command line tool called IP tables that's responsible for managing these rule sets in the kernel. And essentially what I'm going to do in this tutorial is to create a very simple shell script containing IP tables commands um, that will allow our machine to operate as a simple firewall. Here's the uh, setup I'm using for the demonstrations. I have a, a server machine that's running an SSH server um, and a web server and in fact a couple of other things and I have a client machine that will allow me to observe the server machine from outside as it were and just to make life a little less confusing the terminal window on the server machine has a pink background and the one on the client machine has a green background Okay, so let's make a start by going on to the server machine and looking at the current rule set. 
And we see here that basically there are no rules at the moment uh, for the input chain, the forward chain and the output chain. There are no rules being specified and in each case the policy for the chain is to accept the packet. So uh, everything is allowed to flow. There is no filtering of packets taking place. So if I move over onto the client machine, uh, we should be able, for example, to do an SSH login. And there I'm at a command prompt on the server proving that SSH is working. I'm going to uh, exit from there before I get confused. Uh, another tool I can use is Nmap. Now Nmap is a, a port scanning tool. It can tell me which ports are open or which are closed on the machine. So let's try uh, doing a port scan of the server. Uh, and we see there that, um, as we expect, the SSH and the HTTP ports are open. Um, but there are a few others as well. The machine appears to be running um, a MySQL server, and judging by these open ports, it's also running Tomcat. So let's go back onto the server, and I'm going to create uh, a simple script call it FW and I'm just going to put a couple of IP tables commands in here. That first command is to flush any existing rules um, so that we're starting with a clean slate as it were. And then I'm going to set the policy on the input chain to be to drop the packets. And that's all, just those two commands for now. So we run the script. And now if I do my IP tables command again, uh, we'll see one change, which is that the policy on the input ch chain is now to drop the packets. Let's have a look at what effect this has had from the uh, client side. First of all, if I try to repeat the SSH login again, uh, there's actually going to be a very long pause. Uh, it's not going to work, but it's going to take a long time to time out. So I'm just going to pause the recording until it does. OK, so we'll continue recording now, and you'll see that the attempt to connect to port 22 on the server has timed out. Let's try doing the Nmap again. Now again, this is going to take quite a long time, um, so I'm going to pause the recording at this point. OK, well, we're resuming again something like uh, 200 seconds later, which is how long it took Nmap uh, to figure out that all of the 1,000 ports that it scanned on this machine are filtered. And what it means by filtered is that it simply did not get any kind of reply uh, when it attempted to open connections on those ports. So it really cannot tell whether they're open or closed. One other thing we can try uh, is to ping the machine. And again, that's going to sit there for a, a long time, um, not receiving any replies. So I will actually uh, interrupt that with a control C. And you see that, that it has received no replies to its pings. So Really, as far as the network is concerned, uh, the machine has practically disappeared completely. Let's go back to the server then and add one rule into our script. So I'm going to add 
a rule to the input chain that says if the packet is an ICMP packet we'll accept it. Now as you probably know uh, ICMP is the protocol uh, that's used by programs like PING uh, among other things. So we'll save the file, uh, we'll rerun the script and we'll go back to the client. We should now find that our ping works there. The ping is fine. I'll interrupt it. Um, our Nmap scan uh, would come up with the same result as it did before and we still wouldn't be able to do an SSH login to the machine. So let's hop back over to the server and we'll continue uh, to extend our little script adding uh, a couple more rules to the input chain. Now let's suppose that we want to allow access to our web server from um, anywhere, from any IP address. So we can say uh, for TCP packets with a destination port of 80, I, I could also use a symbolic name for the service there instead of the numeric port number. And then we actually want to accept packets uh, coming in that are destined for port 80. I'm going to make one other change. Uh, again, I'm simply appending packets to, to the input chain and the, uh, the, the rules will go into the chain in the order that these commands uh, appear in the script. Um, again, um, I'm looking for TCP packets but this time um, I want a destination port of 22 and I'm also going to specify that I'm only going to allow access to the SSH port from the local network. So I can do that like this. Uh, specifying the, uh, the IP address block of the local network and then if uh, for that rule we, we accept the packet. So there's my uh, uh, complete little IP tables rule set. Um, we'll run the script one more time. Uh, we'll go back over to the client machine. Uh, I will just run the nmap scan one more time. Now it's going to be quite a bit faster this time. There we are, it's actually finished. It took uh, just under five seconds. Um, it's still showing um, 998 of the ports as being filtered, uh, but it is now showing uh, SSH and uh, HTTP ports as being open. Of course the results that we would get from that scan uh, depends on where we run it from. If we're running it from the local network so we can see the SSH port open. If we run it from a different network uh, that port would also appear uh, to be filtered like the 998 others. Well, we could do a lot more than that. I really only have just scratched the surface. The, the, uh, the IP tables syntax really is a, a mini language in, in its own right. Um, but I think it gives you the idea of the kind of thing that you can do. Um, if you get the impression that this is rather low level uh, way of going about things, then, then you'd be right. Uh, and the other thing, of course, is that doing things this way, that the changes that we're making this way, would not survive a reboot, although it would be straightforward enough to, to arrange for this script to be run at boot time. Um, so let me show you uh, one other uh, little tool. This is a, a Red Hat specific tool that you might find is, is a little easier. So we need to go back over onto the server um, and I'm going to run the tool system Conf config firewall. We'll just bring it into the uh, K 
manufacturer area here. Uh, this is the graphical version of the tool. There's also um, a text-based version if you're trying to use it on a machine uh, that has no graphical uh, desktop installed. Uh, and you'll see here we're on the trusted services screen and it is really a question of just ticking the checkboxes for the services that you want to enable. So we have here SSH and uh, HTTP enabled. If we also wanted to enable Samba, which involves, you can see here, opening up a, a number of ports, uh, we just uh, check the box. Um, the firewall tool here also has the notion of what it calls trusted interfaces. Now the idea here might be we ha have a machine, say, with two network interfaces, uh, an outward facing one that's connected to the internet net that we don't trust and then one connected to our internal network that we do trust. And by marking it here as a trusted interface, then we don't apply any, any packet filtering uh, to the traffic coming in on, on that interface. So that tool uh, presents perhaps a, an, an easier way of, uh, of constructing these IP tables rule sets. Well, that's um, as far as I intended to go um, in this little tutorial. Um, I hope you found it useful, and if you've made it this far, thanks for watching.